As the war in Ukraine reaches the 1000th day, Russia's Bryansk region has been hit with the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, Ukrainian media reported on Tuesday. The attack occurred on the night leading to November 19, days after U.S. President Joe Biden authorized Ukraine's use of U.S.-supplied long-range missiles in attacks deep into Russia. Atikm struck the 67th arsenal of the main missile and artillery directorate of the Russian Defense Ministry in the city of Karachivo. The strike caused an explosion and fire. The information was confirmed by the Ukrainian general staff. According to the report, a total of 12 explosions occurred after the strike. The targeted warehouse stores artillery shells, including North Korean-made shells, KB guided aerial bombs, anti-aircraft missiles and shells for multiple rocket launcher systems. Karachivo residents reported explosions and detonations, including an alleged attack on a military base, as shared in local social media chats and reported by Russian media outlet Astra. The town lies more than 100 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. Kremlin has warned against Ukraine's use of long-range missiles in strikes against Russia. Germany is reportedly set to begin large-scale deliveries of kamikaze drones to Ukraine, which have high autonomy in conditions of electronic warfare and can effectively strike distant targets. As Bild writes, these UAVs have already been nicknamed Mini Taurus. They have modern systems that make them invulnerable to Russian electronic warfare systems and GPS jamming. He delivery of drones was also confirmed by German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius. The drones in question are attack UAVs from the Helsing Company, equipped with artificial intelligence technologies that provide them with greater autonomy in hostile environments with electronic warfare interference. These drones are compared to the Taurus missiles, which Chancellor Olaf Scholz has repeatedly refused to provide. The reports indicate that 4,000 of these UAVs have been ordered for Ukraine. Deliveries are expected to begin in December, with several hundred drones arriving per month. Some prototypes are already undergoing trials and improvements in real combat conditions in Ukraine's east. A key feature of these UAVs is their advanced software, which helps them navigate the terrain using various markers, allowing them to reach their targets even in challenging weather or on scorched earth terrain, as well as in conditions of electronic warfare. Once the UAV identifies the target and the operator confirms it, the drone can autonomously strike the target even if communication is lost. In addition, German drones have a flight range four times greater than that of conventional Ukrainian kamikaze UAVs, and are significantly cheaper than their Western counterparts. Bill does not disclose the exact cost of these drones, but the American Switchblade 600 costs around 100,000 euros, and the Russian Zala Lancet costs 35,000 euros. According to Pistorius, the Ukrainian armed forces will be able to effectively use these UAVs against key Russian military facilities, in particular command posts and logistics centers. Berlin may also consider implementing similar technologies in its Bundeswehr. In October, it became known that Germany would allocate billion-dollar aid packages to support Ukraine's defense efforts. By the end of the year, with the support of our partners from Belgium, Denmark and Norway, we will deliver another package worth 1.4 billion euros to Ukraine," said German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Russia wants to regain full control of the Kursk region ahead of possible peace talks under the administration of new U.S. President Donald Trump. However, Ukrainian troops continue to repel enemy counterattacks, The Washington Post reports. It is clear that Moscow will not begin any negotiations until it expels every single Ukrainian soldier from the Kursk region, Konstantin Remchikov, editor-in-chief of Nezavisimea Gazeta, told journalists. The publication noted that Russia has begun to realize that the Kursk region could become one of the levers of pressure in possible negotiations. Therefore, the Kremlin wants to enter into dialogue only from a position of strength, returning the region under its control. 
Ukrainian forces seized up to 1,500 square kilometers of Russian territory in the first two weeks of the Kursk operation in August, Black Bird Group analyst Pazi Peroinen told reporters. He stressed that the Russians have been constantly counterattacking since then, and with the offensive now coming from three directions, he predicts that Ukrainian-held territory will shrink in the coming days. According to U.S. intelligence, Russia sent at least 10,000 North Korean soldiers to the Kursk region, the publication said. The agency noted that one of the major counteroffensives was carried out almost immediately after Donald Trump was elected U.S. president. Journalists shared that the latest counteroffensive by Russian occupiers did not go smoothly. According to them, the enemy achieved only minor successes and also lost a significant number of troops and equipment. A 39-year-old Ukrainian soldier named Alexander, who works in intelligence in the Kursk region as part of the 82nd Brigade, told reporters that in recent days the defense forces have destroyed more than 50 Russian vehicles, including armored personnel carriers and tanks. According to him, Russian soldiers constantly make the same mistakes, they drive on roads that are controlled by Ukrainian firepower, miss turns and even shoot at their own infantry positions. Artem Efanov, a drone operator in the 82nd Brigade, told reporters that he saw Russian troops getting stuck in swamps, bogs, and rivers, with muddy terrain preventing them from successfully advancing. In addition, the former company commander of the Adar Battalion, Yevgeny Daiki, spoke about whether Ukraine needs to hold the Kursk region. He noted that there is a second part of the operation, which has not worked yet. During one of the unsuccessful offensives of the 810th Marine Brigade of the Russian Federation in the Kursk region, the Russians lost 17 military vehicles due to mine explosions. It is noted that the Ukrainian approach to planting mines differs from the enemy strategy on the territory of Ukraine, Forbes reports. The commander of the Ukrainian ground forces, General Alexander Pavlyuk, shared that in the nine days since the start of the offensive in the Kursk region, a third of the Russian military vehicles that the occupiers sent in that direction have been blown up by mines, journalists note. The publication emphasized that the only Ukrainian engineering unit in the Kursk region remains the 12th Support Regiment. It is responsible for laying many mines in the region. The Ukrainian approach to laying mines in the Kursk region differs from the strategy of the Russian occupiers, journalists said. Instead of mining a large area, Ukrainian troops are placing mines on several roads leading to the most critical sector on the western side of the Kursk salient. According to journalists, it was this approach to mining that led to the Russian Federation losing more than 1,500 soldiers daily in the war. In addition, Ukrainian troops, despite the enemy's superiority in numbers, were able to organize local counterattacks. Analysts at the Royal United Services Institute in London, Jack Waddling and Nick Reynolds, told reporters that the enemy's heavy losses could be due to difficulties in detecting mines. However, there is another option, Russian intelligence officers are detecting mines, but their commanders are not passing on accurate intelligence to assault groups. This guess is confirmed by Russian propagandists. They reported that soldiers from the 810th Marine Brigade of the Russian Federation were falsely informed that the road on which Russian equipment was subsequently blown up had come under the control of the occupiers. Media previously wrote that Russia wants to return the Kursk region before possible negotiations, but Ukraine is not going to give in. The Russian Federation fears that this region could become a lever of pressure on the Kremlin. In addition, Reserve Major Alexei Getman told what the Kursk operation gave to Ukraine. According to him, the positive effect is obvious even now. There is no point in expanding the territory of Kursk region controlled by the Ukrainian armed forces, we are not going to annex these territories to Ukraine. Can the Russians push us out of there? Of course, they can, especially if they bring in more forces. We will not be able to hold out in Kursk region like we did near Pokrovsk. We are already avoiding serious military clashes there, we are maneuvering," he said. Thank you.